Uh, it is now time for members' statement. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Progressive Conservative Caucus to recognize our medical and health professionals as they celebrate the 150th anniversary of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario. Since its founding in 1866, the CPSO has been ensuring that Ontarians are served by some of the best doctors in the world who have ma made great medical breakthroughs all in an effort to save human lives. So let's remind ourselves of some of that amazing progress. 30 years added to the average lifespan and a 90 percent drop in the infant death rate. Public immunization and eradication of diseases that both killed millions and left millions more paralyzed. The discovery of insulin and diabetes treatment and the ability to transplant bone marrow, a lung or a heart and to even resuscitate one that stopped. When we consider these remarkable achievements, we remind that they are possible because of our dedicated professionals and the strong institutions and regulatory bodies like the CPSO. When the college was established, there were about 1.5 million residents in Ontario. They are served by about 1,770 doctors. Today, there are 13.5 million Ontarians and 35,000 doctors licensed by the college. Initially, the CPSO had only two women licensed to practice, Jenny Trout in 1875 and Emily Stowe in 1880. By 2000, women made up over 30 per cent of the physician population, and this number continues to increase every year. From Dr. Stout and Dr. Stowe to Dr. Frederick Banting, as CPSO members have a strong track record of achieving what once seemed improbable, now imminently possible. Some of them are also war heroes. Mr. Speaker, while the Warriors claim the lives of 50 CPSO registered doctors, including John McRae, also known for his poem in Flanders Fields, and frontline surgeon Dr. Norman Bethune, their courage and legacy lives on. In 1992, the CPSO became the first in Canada to ban its doctors from performing female circumcision. It also adopted a zero-tolerance policy towards sexual abuse. Challenging as some of these changes may be, we are confident that the CPSO will continue to be a thriving organization that plays a key role in Ontario's health system. With that, we ought to stay confident that with a strong regulatory body such as CPSO and its dedicated medical and health professionals, we will continue to conquer many more battles like cancer and to save lives. Congratulations on all of your achievements, and thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor to Thank you, Speaker. I want to brag a little bit this afternoon about an amazing young teenager from Windsor. Her name is Sarah Lewis. She's 15 years old. She and some other classmates recently toured some war cemeteries in Italy. Earlier this month, she hosted a presentation on her travels and gave a brief history of the Canadian involvement in the Italian campaign. She did this at a Legion Hall and invited Windsor veterans, their families, and supporters. I was there with my friends Larry Costello and Ralph Mayville. Both are vets. Both are in their 90s. They were very impressed with her presentation, as was I, and it's no wonder. Sarah started her community outreach on her seventh birthday. Instead of presents, she wanted warm socks for the homeless. Since then, she has collected more than $60,000 for the needy. She has delivered 22,000 pairs of socks, as well as hats, mittens, gloves, sleeping bags, backpacks, food, and toiletry items. At 15, Sarah Lewis exemplifies all that is good in the young people of today. She cares for the less fortunate. She recognizes the sacrifices paid by our aging veterans. She respects their contributions and she wants more of us to do the same. For that, I say, she well deserves a, sal a salute from all of us here in the Ontario Legislature. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to rise today and talk about the great summer tradition that recently took place in my, the, the riding of Scarborough Southwest. On August 27th, I hosted my annual community barbecue at the West Scarborough Neighbourhood Community Centre. This is truly a great highlight of my summer, an opportunity to get outside, enjoy some beautiful summer weather, and spend time with residents from across my riding in a fun, casual setting. The best part was that it was fun for the whole family. In addition to the burgers, pizza, and other refreshments, we had face painting, balloon animals, and a clown who spent the afternoon entertaining everyone who made it out both young and old. Uh, we had a great turnout, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, another highlight of the day was our raffle drop, where we had passes for the exhibition, the Ontario Science Centre, and gift certificates for local restaurants. It was a really great way to end the summer. So I'd like to thank everybody who came out to make the barbecue such a success. And I'd especially like to give special mention to everyone at West Scarborough Neighbourhood Community Centre for being such great hosts 
and for allowing us to have access to their facility, and also to the vendors, the entertainers and volunteers who donated their time and talents to really make this a special day for the Scarborough Southwest community. We had a tremendous amount of volunteers who came out and helped, and uh, I really appreciated that because they weren't paid, they came out and helped out with the, with the, with the special event. But with that, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say thank you, and uh, I'll see you next year with the same statement. <laughs> Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Patty and I ended the annual Appreciation Day for the 130 carousel and mini train volunteers. And, Speaker, this is a letter that was read that night, which really encapsulates this unique attraction. Quote I'm writing to thank you for the wonderful work you and your volunteers do. My family and I have spent the last six weeks in North Bay while I'm working here temporarily as a pediatrician. Riding the train and carousels has certainly been a highlight of our time in North Bay. We have been there at least once a week and sometimes two or three times. Our two-year-old son's eyes light up when he sees the train coming and he delights in riding it. At home, he's been taking his used tickets around while wearing his train conductor hat. He calls all aboard and then lets his toys ride the railway of his own invention. He also loved riding the carousel from picking out a horse to the ride itself. He, he ends the letter to our volunteers by saying, thank you for the delight you have brought our child. We really appreciate the efforts of your volunteers to provide these experiences to young children and their parents. You provide a wonderful service to your community. Speaker, we couldn't have said it any better to the 130 men and women who come out all spring, summer, and fall long and take care of these kids. We say thank you. Thank you. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. When the government announced changes to the autism program last spring, families all across Ontario were thrown into turmoil. The Liberal government insisted that the changes were based on scientific research. Families were forced to fight tirelessly to get this government to understand that their actions were wrong-headed and were not backed up by the facts. Today, we learned that the government's own expert panel wrote to the minister just three weeks after the changes were announced to denounce those changes. They said the government's plan is not in keeping with the report's recommendations as a whole. They made it clear that there should not be an age cutoff for IVI therapy. They warned that children will fail in their progress or will even lose their previously acquired skills. This government forced vulnerable children and families to fight to prove what the expert panel had already told them. That is just wrong. Changes have been made, but confusion remains, and families with children over five are still being told they're not, they're not eligible for IBI. We still have a long way to go to ensure that children with autism get the therapy that they need when they need it. I implore the new minister to listen to families, to listen to the experts. Families should not have to fight at every turn to get the treatment that their children need and they so desperately need to thrive. Thank you so much. Thank you. The member Davis, the member from Center. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since arriving at Queen's Park, I've worked to advocate for improved transit in my riding of Kitchener Centre. I'm happy to say that we had some very positive announcements from our government this summer, announcements that will improve transit for people in all of Waterloo Region. Now, This summer, I stood beside our Premier and the Minister of Transportation to announce a $43 million transit hub to be built in downtown Kitchener. This hub is going to allow commuters to seamlessly connect from GO trains and buses to Grand River Transit and the future LRT. We also announced that the province has reached an agreement in principle with CN Rail. A new bypass will free up the line for passenger trains and will ultimately increase capacity and speed along this corridor. Our transportation minister was back the next week to announce a new GO train stop that's going to be built just outside Kitchener and Breslau, and it will feature a large parking garage so commuters can leave their cars there, hop on the train, and head for the GTA. 
And a week ago, we doubled the number of morning and afternoon GO trains from four to eight, along with adding a new express GO bus service that runs all day between Kitchener and Toronto. And I'm happy to report that progress is continuing on construction of the LRT and the new Highway 7. Mr. Speaker, transit moves people, transit connects communities, transit contributes to strong economies, and I'm proud to be part of a team that's bringing better transit to my community. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Further member statements the member for Prince Edward Hastings. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Sometimes the reference to heroes gets tossed around a little too cavalierly, but for 51-year-old Calvin Stein of Maydock in Prince Edward Hastings, the moniker fits perfectly. Earlier this summer, a team of horses competing in the horse pull at the Tweed Fair broke free from their handler, and it began to stampede through the fairgrounds, slamming into a car and a truck and then charging toward fairgoers. That's when Calvin leaped to the rescue. The Hydro One lineman, who's also a cash crop farmer, saw the horses steaming toward the young family, a dad with three little children in its path. Calvin, who's a horseman himself, saw the dad pull two of the kids to safety, but the little three-year-old girl was about to be trampled, unaware of the pending danger. Calvin grabbed her, threw her to safety between a couple of vehicles as the team of horses then mowed him down. Wow. In his words, he flipped and flopped as the horses trampled his back and head. He recalls a pool of blood and not being able to breathe and thought to himself, so this is how Calvin is gonna croak. Thankfully, he didn't, Mr. Speaker, but he did sustain some pretty serious injuries, a broken orbital socket, a pretty mangled eye, a concussion, and some very deep cuts to his face and head that are going to leave some pretty nasty scars for years to come. Calvin, make sure you wear those scars proudly because in July 2016, you were a hero. Calvin dislikes being referred to as a hero. Instead, he bestows that title to our men and women in uniform and emergency services. But this summer, Calvin Stein of Madoc was indeed a hero, and he should be thanked by all of us in the Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to start off by saying it's wonderful to be back. Welcome everyone back. Hope everyone enjoyed their summer, spending time with their constituents, their families, and their friends. On Saturday, September 3rd, I organized my second annual back-to-school community barbecue at Dufferin Grove Park in the heart of my riding of Davenport. Over 500 community members of all ages attended the event, where they enjoyed complimentary hot dogs, hamburgers, veggie burgers, gummy candy, and ice cream to beat the heat. Many local organizations were on hand to provide information about their programs and services, including Davenport Perth Neighbourhood and Community Health Centre and Sporting FC Soccer Academy. Throughout the afternoon, there were musical performances by lion dancers and martial artists from the Vietnamese Association of Toronto and great music by TNT Productions. Throughout the park, there were many activities for kids, including face painting, soccer drills, dancing, and a safety display with fire helmets from local safety partners from the Toronto Firefighters Association at Station 345 in Davenport. I want to thank all the local organizations, volunteers, and businesses who donated their time and resources to make this event so fantastic. A special shout out to Canada Pure, Dover Court Boys and Girls Club, Downtown Lumber, and to Nita Gelatin, who provided the gummy candy. This event is always a great way to bring the community together and to celebrate the end of summer. It is wonderful to be able to catch up with so many of my constituents and families in Davenport at this yearly event, and I hope to see them all again next year. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Carlton, Mississippi Mills. I rise today to honour a great Olympic athlete from my riding. Erica Wiebe is an Olympic champion who won the gold medal in women's wrestling in Rio de Janeiro a few weeks ago. I'm proud of her achievement, and I'm proud she's from, my, from Stittsville in my riding of Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Erica follows in the footsteps of other great Canadian athletes. Two-time Olympic medalist Carolyn Hoon, who won Canada's first ever gold medal in women's wrestling at Beijing. And Tanya Verbeek, who took two silvers and a bronze also in women's wrestling at three different Olympics. Sports contribute so much to Canadian society. They encourage physical fitness, strength, and good health. 
They also promote important social skills such as teamwork and unity. Sport teaches us a healthy spirit of rivalry and to be gracious in both defeat and victory. It teaches self-discipline and a respect for the rules of the game. It is a great source of civic pride in Ontario. Team spirit is at the foundation of good citizenship. To paraphrase Edmund Burke, being part of a team teaches us to love our society, our country, and our fellow citizens. In life, we all try to play to our strengths. We try to use our individual talents to the fullest. Society thrives when we all do so for the common good. This is what sport teaches us. So I hope you will all join me in saluting the great Olympic gold medal victory of Erica Weeb. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It is now